Education is a very difficult thing to start off with for me. Um, I did. I was in a school in Willow Park in Gogi Road, and I started from, I think I was five or six. I did S1, S2, no, primary one, primary two, primary three. Uh, I did primary four, but I had to repeat primary four because of my, uh, because I was behind on work. So I did primary four again and I did primary five. And then I went into my secondary years and uh, I did S1, S2, S3, S4 and S5. And then we, uh, we emerged with another school called Grays Mill and that became, those Willow Park and Grays Mill became Braidburn. And then so I finished my last two years of secondary school there. And I didn't like being in a, in a special needs school. Um, the old, people think being in a special needs school is all great because you don't have like big exams and you don't get bullied that much and it's all cushy and all that. But it's not really. It, it, it's, um, it doesn't get you in life to be, it doesn't get you anywhere in life, being in a special needs school. It sort of slowed your education down very slowly. And I didn't enjoy that, I didn't really enjoy that. Um, I just felt I was treated like a kid. Um, the teachers, I didn't really get much oomph with the teachers. Well, I had some special ones I really liked that with my art teacher and my my drama teacher who influenced me into drama and art and I liked history as well. But it's, it was not great being there. Um, I, I liked it because my friends were there and I hate my mum hates me saying a special needs school because we're all the same, but when you're in there, you don't feel the same. The exams were easy, um, the classes were easy. I struggled because of my severe dyslexia, not only throughout my whole life, not but I don't tell my whole school life, but I only got told like a month before I left school that I had severe dyslexia and that really cheesed me off. In fact, it still does till today. I remember we, we, we first met, it was about when you were about S3, Alexander, and yeah. you came and talked, started to talk about person-centred planning and stuff like when that. When I met Steve, this man with a beard and talking about people's having ideas about person-centred planning, I thought, wow, this sounds interesting. I was really hooked on it. So I told mum and dad about it, and they were like, oh, we'll, we'll go to it. So my dad came and to the meeting they had, and that changed my my mum and dad's mind. So, um, and I was wondering when they would come back, and they came back the following year, and they did some work with my class about persons, about who are my posters. And then after the end of their stint with us, they asked, does anybody want to carry on? And a few of my friends and myself wanted to carry on. And that's when Percy Centre Planning changed my life and changed my mum and dad's point of view of me as well. I remember what you, after, we did the planning and then you kind of went to college after school, didn't you? Yes, I did. When I left, before I left school, I managed the opportunity to do art for three days a week, and then I did a mainstream course one after once a week after once after once a week afternoon, which was fantastic because he treated me like normal. That I got in trouble just the same as a mainstream person. I wasn't treated any different. I had to wear the tie. Um, my art work improved and I really loved that. 
And then I also, and I did a special needs course in art because that's what my parents and some people thought that was best for me. And I knew that it wasn't. And then I did draw. I got the opportunity to do drama, which is a special needs thing again, and it was too low for me. No offence. And um, and then I got the opportunity to do a six months mainstream course, and that was too difficult for me. My dyslexia played a big part in that because we had to write diaries, and I couldn't do that properly. I'm more of a thinker, I'm more, I can more speak to people instead of writing things down. And then I, we also had, one of the things we had to do was read a book that was, and then we had to re, re, go back on that book and talk about it and I had no idea on what it was because I just couldn't read it. And then I went back and did art and then by that Christmas I knew I didn't want to do art because it just wasn't me. So I got the opportunity, Eggs were very luckily let me do six months internship. internship. And after that uh, six months internship, I started my own company, AJP Dreams. When I was working with Edge, I have learned so much about myself so much about what they do, and I loved it. And by the end of it, I learned there were some bits I didn't like, like the paperwork, and in fact, I think I fell asleep at one of the meetings. <laughs> um, um, and I, but the stuff I liked was hearing my son in my own voice, as you can tell on this, and also um, presenting and doing workshops, letting young people know and and. In sort of letting other young people know about the, the usefulness of dreaming and yeah. thinking about using that to plan for the future. And that? social workers, we, and the sector that, what you, the volunteer sector. Voluntary sector. That's I can think of. So I enjoy doing that kind of stuff. So uh, more in the person who's the boss of eggs, me and her one day came up with an idea of maybe I start up my own company. And that was when AJP Dreams was born. So we looked into doing a few workshops how to start up your own business with... Princess Trust. Princess Trust. And uh, that helped me. And then I got some money from them to start up my own company doing business cards and... Uh, and that was really helpful. You also then went back to college again, didn't you? After uh, w working out that I enjoyed doing this, I knew there was some folks of mine, like my eye, can or eye contact, no, not eye candy, eye contact, was not so great and my speech wasn't, was needing to be improved. So I decided to go back and do drama. Now, there was no... There was no way I was going back to uh, my old college because it just wasn't for me. So I pleaded with my mum and dad to go and do uh, to go to Dunfermline. And um, but it's, it's, I was wrong. It severely helped me. The, t the the teachers inspired me. In fact, when I did my first year, I failed it fantastically. So I asked them if I could come back again. So they said yes. So that's. Um, and for my first year, I kept disappearing because I was doing workshops with Edge and they were always wondering, saying, Alexander, you're, you're missing another class again. So I eventually explained and they were OK with it. So uh, the following year, I was hoping to do more workshops and uh, the weird thing is, they let me do this, but I didn't do many workshops. I did more, I did more acting and um, I fulfilled my love of drama and also doing working with Edge and myself. Um, and that turned me around, going to Carnegie College just turned me around. Kima, what's the name of the course, Alexander? It's just what, it's a mainstream course, isn't it, in, in the college? Yeah, yeah. it's just a mainstream course. The teachers were fantastic. 
I was um, I was a bit of a comedian there. I didn't do much work, but that's to be, but that's just me. I'm more of a vocal person. 